All right, joining me now is Attorney Chris Swecker, former FBI Assistant Director. Chris, good to see you. Um, what, what do you make of the warrant? What does it reveal to you? Well, I think it's a bit of a bombshell when it was unsealed today. I expected to see the, the, uh, the criminal statute cited as the basis for the search warrant to be possession of classified documents. The, what, what they cited are two espionage-related statutes that talk about willful conduct. It talks about uh, docu t taking documents, knowing that they will be used to the injury of the United States. These are serious crimes, and I, I am I'm a, li a little bit uh, surprised. I think there, there was a lot of uh, information floating around out there that this was strictly about possession of classified documents, which is pretty benign. Uh, you know, that means that uh, we, someone has, an agent, official agent of the government has gone to a judge and alleged that the, the ex-president of the United States is guilty of espionage, or at least there's probable cause to believe that. So in regard to espionage, though, does he have to, uh, does there have to be a, a, an allegation with probable cause that he was going to give those documents to a, a foreign country and injure the United States of America? Well, the, the first statute cited talks about knowing that it will be used or can be used to the injury of the United States and, and, and so on. So it goes through different scenarios of possession, transmission, storage, copying, and that sort of thing. And I'm generalizing a little bit, but, it, but it's a pretty serious statute because there's a willfulness intent there, and there is that injury to the United States element, which I think uh, you know, is, pretty, is pretty serious. It's much more serious than, than, I had, uh, than we were led to believe. Okay, well, let's do this. Here is former FBI Director James Comey from 2016 on Hillary Clinton's email scandal. Take a listen. Eight of those chains contained information that was top secret. There is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. She also used her personal email extensively while outside the United States, including sending and receiving work-related emails in the territory of sophisticated adversaries. We cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. So, Chris, here you have Donald Trump with allegedly top secret documents in boxes at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, reports say that they were locked up in, um, in a container. But here you have Hillary Clinton with classified information on a public server that could be accessed by foreign adversaries. But Hillary Clinton wasn't charged, but Donald Trump's home was raided. Can you make sense of the two different standards? Cannot make sense. I mean, th these two cases are very, very similar in that they involve classified government documents. Hillary Clinton's uh, documents were much more exposed on the Internet in that, in that uh, insecure server outside government control versus Donald Trump's, these old documents stored in boxes in double locked closets at Mar-a-Lago. Anybody who's been to Mar-a-Lago knows you can't even get in that front gate. Um, so it's a very, they're, they're striking similarities in that they're, they're talking about possession of classified government documents striking difference in terms of treatment. No search warrants for Hillary Clinton, even though, you know, they, these were 33,000 some odd emails that, and other communications that were just out there. So, Chris, take a look at the statement from the FBI search warrant. Quote, the locations to be searched include the 45 office, all storage rooms, and all other rooms or areas within the premises used or available to be used by the former president and his staff and in which boxes or documents could be stored. So, um, listen, I was a state prosecutor for 10 years. I've got a piece of paper here, and I can fold this paper up really small. In essence, any area within uh, Mar-a-Lago that fits this space, they can search uh, for documents, whether it's related to uh, the documents from his presidency or January 6th or anything else. Am I right? That's correct. Uh, it, it seemed to exclude oc guest-occupied rooms right. and some other, some other places. But, you know, that seems incongruous as well, inconsistent, because, you know, if you were that clever you, and this was a willful act and you were trying to injure the United States, you, you'd, you could hide them in those rooms as well. But in essence, as you point out, they were given authority to go through every little nook and cranny of, of Mar-a-Lago. This warrant was so broadly written, it seems like this was a pretext to get into the home and look for something else. Chris Rucker, thank you for joining and thanks for your insight. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Right here now is uh, for the political perspective is Devin Nunes, former House Intel Chairman and Trump Media and Technology Group CEO. Devin, good to see you. Listen, you've been to this rodeo Thanks, before. You were in Congress. Uh, you were chairing the Intel Committee. You saw uh, and dealt with all of the Russia hoax. You saw uh, leaked stories come out. You saw the media run with it. Any parallels between what you saw in the Intel Committee and what you're watching develop right now uh, in the news media? Sean, what you call a rodeo, I think, can be termed a clown show. So I have had so many calls from former colleagues and and current colleagues or, or people that I serve with. You know, they're still in Congress and they're saying, "Wow, this seems like 2017 all over again." I mean, what your last guest was just discussing, talking about using the Espionage Act. Let me take you back to remember the Logan Act. Remember that they, they have some obscure. Uh, law that hadn't been used in 200 years. I will I will give them credit this time. I think the Espionage Act has been used recently. But if you go back and look, they're comparing President Trump on other social media sites to people from during World War II time frame that had stole classified documents and gave them to the Russians. These are psychotic people, and this has to end. This has been going on now since 2016. President Trump started when he was a candidate, the entire Republican Party. And I'll tell you, our colleagues in the House and Senate better wake up and understand what the hell is going on here. Uh, this is a DOJ that is completely, completely out of control. And I won't use any foul language tonight, Sean, because I know you're just the guest host. I don't want to get you in trouble. I appreciate that. Thanks for not getting me in trouble, Devin. Uh, but here's what I find fascinating. When we look back at the Russia hoax, we did see leaks mm -hmm. from people of knowledge, but people exactly. that were not identified, right? And it ended up that those leaks were coming from folks inside the FBI and the DOJ. And the same thing is happening here. We're seeing people with knowledge are saying that this re is, re is in relationship to nuclear uh, secrets or uh, our armaments. Do you see the parallel in that? And they, it yeah, like no, they, exactly. go ahead, go ahead. Sean, exactly. I mean, I, I, you know, we could spend the whole show going through example after example, but let's just take, okay, you know, let's go back to 2017. What did they always say? They would say when, when we were do, running our investigation into the Russia hoax, which was an entire hoax, it was brought up, I don't have to remind people, Clinton campaign, paid for it, circulated it to the media, and then the, the crooks at the FBI and DOJ run in and say, oh my God, look at all these news stories that they planted or the Clinton people planted. And then the Clinton people had other people, informants, you know, running into the DOJ and, and FBI with secret meetings. And so then they would go to a judge and say, oh my God, look, it's overwhelming evidence. And look, the same damn thing is true here. Last night you had, or yesterday you had Garland who looked like he was some kind of prisoner, looked like he right. just got the hell beat out of him, like he didn't want to do this. And he's reading out of a teleprompter, walks off, doesn't take any questions. And he's, it, you know, no sooner does he walk off that stage than the usual suspects, the Washington Post, they t the same reporters, by the way, get a leak from either the FBI, DOJ, uh, or the White House that, about these Russian secrets. And of course, people are gonna die. Remember that? I mean, they said when, whenever we released the memo that exposed all their corruption, they said the same thing. People are gonna die, our nation, our military. And then of course, all it ended up being was the person that was gonna die was somebody who was tied to democratic leaning groups who was born in Russia, he was their supposed secret asset who's now going to be tried in October for a whole, a whole host of, of charges. And, you know, that's taken five years in, you know, since our investigation. So, so Garland essentially, you know, sat out there, this happens, and it's just, it continues to degrade any trust whatsoever, if there was any left, that people have in the Department of Justice and the FBI. So, so right. And you know what? They're running the same play as the Russia hoax, but it, it actually worked because the media drove that story for four years. And most Americans don't know what you just said, that it was Hillary Clinton driven. It was her bought and paid for dossier. It was a fake story. The whole thing is fake. Most right. Americans don't know that. So they're running the same play here. If they can leak stories, get the media to talk about Donald Trump being a criminal, they're going to still have the American people think that he did something wrong, even though the truth might come out and be like, no, Donald Trump actually declassified this information and he was warranted in holding it uh, at Mar-a-Lago. 20 seconds. 
Yeah, look, none of that, uh, the Mar-a-Lago thing makes zero sense at all. I mean, none of this adds up, right? I mean, it was, the, let, let's just take the people who boxed this up. It, it wasn't like a bunch of Republican congressmen that went in there and boxed this up right. and then shipped it and drove the truck down to Mar-a-Lago. There were people that worked for the government. So I doubt that President Trump ever even looked in those boxes. And, and look, let's not forget, I mean, the big thing that's still out here, the archives, so this, this happens today, they released this, and President Trump, you know, has been very vocal today about, on True Social, by the way, about President uh, Obama and all the records that he had. You have the Clinton people who stuff documents in their pants. So he just puts that out on, on True Social. Well, now you have the director of the National Archives putting out a statement saying, President Obama is perfect. So, look, they've corrupted every damn agency in this yeah. country. There, I don't think so there's right. one left. So, right. You know what? I'm not always a big fan of the Republican Congresses. They're not effective. But Devin Nunes, as a chairman, was incredibly effective. Devin, thanks for joining me tonight. And thanks for all the great thanks, work Sean. you did in Congress and all the great work you're doing at Truth Social. Appreciate it.